reality and tell us completely what we need to know so that we are not only learning from our physical self but from our spiritual self. We've integrated all of that and we can then talk directly to what I like to call the heavenly music and begin to become a part of the divine plan and not just have the divine plan working on us. And that's, that's really an important part. So empowerment is extremely important. You know, I, I think some of the groups of people that uh, have a difficult time with information like this are religious groups. And um, say like even the Christians, for right. instance. But I think a lot of their um, difficulty lies in the definition of words. And one of them, I've always thought about Christ consciousness. Like, what is Christ consciousness? It's a oneness. It's an opening up to us all being part of something beyond anything that's ever been in our historic memory at all. And I think if we could redefine some of this, these different religions that are having so much difficulty because they're, they're butting heads against each other, could see a more common denominator if they could look at the process that it seems like is happening and it seems like it's been happening since the beginning of time since the beginning of time when when matter first started to form it was just a quantum soup but underlying that pattern was a, a consciousness pulling things together in atoms and molecules and cells and and through the evolution of this pattern it seems like we're at the place now where these planetary cells called human beings are coming together as a planetary consciousness. And this is what I see that a lot of religions have seen for centuries, but possibly misinterpreted it because of the, the lack of knowledge or the lack of spiritual evolution. But what you're saying seems to fit into this, that we're headed towards a transformation that goes beyond our individual forms and is somehow incorporating any, everything into it. Right, that's exactly what's happening. If you look at a religion initially, it was to explain right and wrong to people, it was to explain to people what really is going on, what's really happening. And then to give basic so-called sacred truths about the reality that we live in. What is going on? which is very important. Humans like to know, are very curious about what's going on. As you said, as we expand out conscious-wide, as we begin to search, the one thing even the most religious begin to look at is what are the definitions? And one of the basic things that all religious, great religious teachers have done is take the entire concept of exactly how these definitions are and expand them out. So for that reason, you can look at Christianity and its basic tenets. You can look at the basic tenets in Buddhism or in any of the other major religions, even in the various writings of, of the Vedic literature of ancient India, and it, which is, of course extends into the present period. All of these things have basic similar definitions. So if we just look at how to create definitions that smooth things out and allow for a good fundamental base, those who are even hesitant because of certain religious beliefs can then find ways to take their beliefs and expand them and become part of the movement that we're talking about. And so this is really important. One of the things that people who uh, attempt to bring together various different religions do is they look for these same similar things we're talking about which are common denominators. And practically all religions talk about that their great teacher was the supreme vessel for their salvation. What is the salvation about? It's about changing consciousness. And this is then becomes the key. We begin looking at consciousness as the next way of looking at what is not only religious philosophy, but is the whole concept of scientific philosophy. And we can begin to pull together various aspects of this and create what, when I was a kid growing up on the ships, discovered is called, they call it, if you translate it into English, spiritual science. And what the spiritual science says is that all things have a divine consciousness. 
and this divine consciousness has a supreme purpose. And the supreme purpose is to move people into understanding to the maximum of their abilities and even beyond to why we are beings of light and what does this really mean. And this is something that people sense all the time. You'll have like a flash moment where you feel different. You feel totally at peace with things and you no longer see any object in your reality as being dangerous. You begin to be able to quote unquote understand it. And this is something that is very, very important for people as they move higher and higher in consciousness. They begin to look around and they see that indeed there are these aha moments and they're growing as they become more searching spiritually for everything and they discover that you can put these together and then if you go back and look at the various texts that you religiously came from you'll begin to see how these moments then with a slightly different understanding from what you've learned can then be changed to where all these different things start coming together and that's why when people become more and more into into the concepts of who and what they are and they look back at the old religious texts, they begin to find parts within it which verify what they're doing and also allow them to move, I would like to call it, cross-culturally, religiously, uh, to one another. And so what you begin seeing within one another is that you are the same people, you have the same basic beliefs, and that you are moving towards something incredible. Because every one of these religious texts talk about this great golden age, this great period that is approaching. And one of the things that really has made people look heavily at, for instance, even at the uh, so-called uh, Mayan dates and Mayan cosmology and the Mayan calendar is the same concept. And the ultimate concept in Mayan is to develop what they like to call the tomb or the diamond mine. What is the diamond mine? The diamond mind is a mind where the spiritual and the physical aspects of knowledge and wisdom come together in one person. So what they are basically saying, all of them, is there's a golden age. This great diamond mind is where we are headed towards and that all the world and all its war and its want, etc. is capable and soon will be an illusion and something that does not need to continue to manifest itself in our minds but can be changed, can be drastically changed. And so what we have within us is this belief that we are different. We are not really physical beings that have to war, have to have division against one another. We are more than that. We are physical and spiritual beings who are capable of reaching a point this golden point where we can become one with each other. And so this is something that is growing everywhere around us that where we see ourselves as a great oneness as well as a great individual oneness. In other words, the great oneness is all of us together. The great individual oneness is all that wisdom coming within each every one of us and allowing us to see and expand who and what we are as far as our talents, our abilities, our joy, etc. And that's what's happening right now. If, if a person was watching this, a, a discerning person, <clears throat> trying to figure out how much truth is there in what is being said right now, well, one of the things that comes to mind is there's over 30,000 clay tablets that comes from the Sumerian culture that clearly prints out in detail a lot of what you're talking about, how the Anunnaki came and intervened into our genetics, our bloodline. All of this is rewriting our biblical history, which has basically been our accepted history. So as we go along and, and we let in this information, I, I think a lot of what you're saying is information to be taken in through discernment and processed with our ability to let go of our Iron Age beliefs. I mean, it, it's really difficult to imagine how a society can hang on to a belief for thousands and thousands of years and basically put it into a doctrine and a dogma to where it's so rigid 
that it's completely out of touch with science, with evolution, with all the biology, physics, technology, everything is so encapsulated right now. What would you say to a person that is coming from that area of discernment where they're starting to reach out for real information and trying to let go and break down their beliefs? I, I remember Joseph Campbell said once, one of the, the biggest dangers he felt with religion and how structured it is is because it's taken so literally, but within religion are motifs and mythologies that are translating some of the greatest human truths that can really cause spiritual transformation, but we're losing it. And if we don't break down that analytical, literal way of seeing things, we'll end up throwing out the whole thing and lose out on a lot of the mythology that transmits these truths. And a lot of what I see you saying is it's almost like taking the hinge pin out of a door. And a lot of people don't realize what's happening until they push open the door and it goes crashing down. What would you say to a person that's just trying to be honest with himself, open, discerning, and listening to you right now? Well, the first thing I always say is go within. Look at the intuitive energies that you feel for what I'm saying. And then go to the next step. Look around after you go through that whole period of meditating within and looking at from your own opinion what I'm talking about. Take that, whatever that stuff is that you've come up with, whatever your internal mind functions have come up with, and take that and look back at where you came from culturally. Look at the realities and really look at them. Don't just read them. Discern within your own mind how these things happened. What are they about? And as you begin to do that, things will begin to slip away. Other things will suddenly, in another series of aha moments, will begin to, to grow up in front of you and become real. And as you do this, then start looking around, because there's lots of books to read, there's lots of other AV material to read, you know, to listen to, hear. As you do this, keep looking at what your intuitive reactions are. Go deeply into your intuitive self. Cultivate your intuitive self. Use that as your guide, kind of like your truth detector. Begin to develop that belief pattern within you that I need to be inside. I need to stay open, yet I understand where I'm coming from, but I'm expanding upon that. And take whatever materials you come up with, whatever concepts or ideas, and then keep doing the process I just talked about. Look back at your cultural realities and begin taking what you've added to your belief patterns and stay open about this. Take your belief patterns, take what you've learned, and look back at it again and keep doing this. It's a process. It's like it's like being a giant onion and you begin one layer goes away, another layer goes away and you're getting closer to the core. As you do this, remember this is the key indicator. Stay open intuitively. When you feel certain things within your mind, within your body, especially within your heart, do that. Now in ancient times, the only organ that was left for instance, with the Egyptian mummies, was the heart. The reason is because the heart was believed to be the true indicator of what was going on in the world, and in the world of spirit, physical, etc. The Egyptians even went so far as to even take the brain and all the other organs and just take it out of the body. But the heart had to stay. The heart could not be moved. And so we need to move toward a heart logic of unwinding this onion that we're talking about. As we begin to do this, as we begin to see the process in front of us, step by step, we begin to expand more and more. We begin to see how did our cultural aspects, whether they be a religious aspect or traditions, etc., what are they about? And keep expanding upon that. As you do this, you'll begin seeing other people and interacting with other people that are doing the same